we just want to welcome you. Um, I'm so glad to be here at the GOTC in Austin. It is so awesome to see that the pandemic hasn't stopped us from gathering together. As the Bible reminds us, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope we'll be able to enjoy and be blessed by the activities planned for today. Take some time to soak in the camaraderie, renew the friendships, and meet new people. Let's enjoy a blast from the past, a trip down memory lane, one that many of, many of us here will be able to identify with. <coughs> 30 years ago, one June evening, my dad and I took a train from Kerala to Karpwadi, along with several applicants who were doing the final interview to be granted admission to the nursing program at CMC. We were waiting to see the list posted in the College of Nursing naming the 50 students selected into the batch of 1992. I looked around and saw the ones who were with me and immediately felt out of place. I say that because it seemed that these applicants had prepared much better for the interview than I did. I had already started my degree <coughs> one year earlier at a local college, so I didn't stress out about the possibility of rejection. And to my utmost surprise, my name was among the 50, evoking in me both joy and fear. This was my first time away from, to an unknown territory, and most importantly, away from home. What can I say? In his time, he makes all things beautiful. Batch of 1992, a class full of students, from bookworms to those who could easily fall asleep <laughs> anywhere, be it an anatomy class, sociology, or biochemistry. We had all the typical college characters, from the comedians to artists, musicians, not to mention the dancers. <laughs> Some of us even mastered Bharatanatyam in our first year elective. Oh, how many times has the Glass Palace witnessed our beautiful talent nights displayed under the starry skies? Between lamp lighting and the graduation, we ran from D Ward to P3, Q3 West to J Nursery, and our evenings were filled with trips to Asha building. Even while crafting care plans and care studies, the 49 of us became best buddies and began engaging in group devotions and prayers. In our most challenging times, when one of us faced an issue or problem with family, health, or with exams, we would come together and pray. And this was the secret of the success of the Batch of and this tradition is even continued to this day. We join in prayer week after week from all parts of the world. We see the fruits of our prayers primarily in our families, professional lives, and ministry to the underprivileged. The Batch of 92 is spread out all over the globe, across the US, UK, Middle East, India, Ethiopia, Singapore, and even an under in Australia. I'm really proud of our batch for producing the finest nursing professionals. We have grown from the corridors of the College of Nursing to hold clinical nursing positions and executive positions in prestigious universities, hospitals, and companies. I did venture to say that if we really wanted, we could start our own hospital. <laughs> we started our journey 30 years ago and our silver jubilee of graduation <coughs> last year. And along the way, two of our precious peers have been promoted to glory. And that they are Hannah and Sheena. They remain in our hearts even to this day. CMC Wellor and the Batch of 92 has had their own special impact on my life. 
I'm blessed that it was in God's will for me to attend CFC, a place where we all learned not to be ministered unto, but to minister. I'm sure you all will agree that this motto of our alma mater has impacted our lives. We may even find our professional success rooted in our practice of this statement. It is not just a virtuous course, but rather an intentional <coughs> and practical action that Jesus Christ displayed when he washed the disciples' feet. In the Bible, we find this picture to be the ultimate display of servant leadership. Since Christ advent 2,000 years ago, we find this teaching lives on after having inspired Dr. Ida Scudder, founder of CFC. I want to take a moment to talk about our growth since CFC. There were times in our studies that we felt like quitting. As I stand here and look into the past, standing here, I'm so glad that all of us stuck through with the program. We recognized then that the valuable insight and education we gained at CFC would have had a long-lasting practical impact in our line of work. A special thanks goes to all our teachers from first-year instructors to our professors. If I were to, to mention their names, the list would be too long. After graduating in 1996, I completed my commitment with CMC and continued working in Mission Hospital, both in TMM in Kerala, as well as in Narsapur in Andhra. In 1997, I got married to my husband and joined him in Dallas, uh, Texas in the fall of 2001. Once I arrived in Dallas, God opened avenues for me to work as a clinical nurse and later enabled me to move into more administrative nursing positions. After praying for some time, I enrolled in the master's program and here too, I experienced God's provisions and in spite of many setbacks, God enabled me to graduate with my master's in healthcare management. I'm currently, currently the Director of Clinical Services for U.S. Renal Care, the third largest dialysis care provider in the U.S. And as I look back, I can boldly say it is not any of my merits, but the grace and mercy that God has shown me that has brought me thus far. And I'm sure that is for each one of us, right? When I left CMC in 1992, I had a small desire to serve by leading, but never really acted upon it. As I mentioned earlier, God opened doors for me to serve in administrative roles, requiring me to influence and motivate others through leadership. I learned that leadership isn't about imposing rules in a draconian manner, but rather engaging with those working with you so that they learn and grow from the way you lead them. Soon I found myself taking on more responsibilities. I was challenged and I was really enjoying it thoroughly. It, I find joy in leadership, especially in lifting people up to a new level. I've seen people advance in their careers from working hard with only their high school diploma and later on taking leadership roles. How can we effectively lead and invest in those around us? We need to know their needs, know their dreams, and feel their heartbeat. Often there is a stigma of management being too corporate and machine-like. Yet, even in the role I found, I was able to imbue humanity and care to those I worked with. I can tell you, it makes quite the impact. As I close out, I leave you with a few pointers. Timeless advice, which I hope you will find useful in incorporating in your day-to-day -day lives and caring for others. Number one, as we all learned at our alma mater, not to be ministered, but to minister. Find ways to impact and inspire those around you. This will pay dividends in both performance and relationships. 
Number two, keep faith. Romans 4 verse 2 reminds us that Abraham, the father of faith, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Trust God and lean on him. You will find your days go by with peace if you do so. I can recount countless times where faith in God sustained me during the tough trials from our exams in school to audits in my current job, which required diligence on my part, but also intentional prayer to the Lord. When I talk about prayer, I also had the badge of 92 prayer warriors. Some of you are here with me. Come alongside and pray for my needs when I felt overwhelmed. That's the beauty of the CMC Baylor community. Number three. Give God the glory. God will continue to open the doors for us in all aspects of our lives as we get accustomed to giving Him the glory and honor. As the Bible reads, God gives grace to the humble. I say this looking at the talented individuals in this room to remind us all that humility combined with fervent leadership and trust in the Lord will open a plethora of opportunities for us to continue impacting, making an impact in the lives of others and for God. Once again, a special thanks to the GOTC organizers um, and to Dr. Vincia Pandian, Dr. Jesse George, both of whom are from the batch of 1992, as we heard, for giving me this opportunity. And let me conclude with this stanza from our college anthem. Strong to serve, Strong to save the defenseless. May thy spirit inspire us anew. Not to gain, but to give be our motto. Three cheers for the silver and blue. Thank you.